there, there was a, um, I'm going to share something with y'all. There's a lady over here at the uh, thrift store, Mexican lady, and she's Muslim. She said she took Shahada overseas or something. She was, her husband was in the Gulf War. She took Shahada or something. So, brothers been talking to her, giving a down about this and this and that. She tells one of the brothers today that one of the Arab brothers told her, well, hey, how come you haven't been coming to Masjid Fresno no more? She said, well, I want to go to the other Masjid over there on the west side. You know, it's, it's right here by my store. He told her, don't go over there. Those are the black Muslims, and they don't believe properly. They believe in two prophets. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad or whatever. So this is a lie that's being spread about us. <clears throat> Not only that, to say that that's the black Muslims over there, we're all Muslims, okay? So regardless of what people think, or regardless of what they feel, <coughs> it's our responsibility to remove those myths. It's our responsibility to remove any type of negative connotation that's on our masjid <coughs> or on this community. What we're teaching, what we're learning, or what we believe in. Now, do we get mad, all men and heirs? No, we just do better than them. One of the things that we have to remove, or Islam removes, is racism. Allah says that the best in the sight of Allah is not the ones who are black, white, brown, yellow, purple. But he said the best of us in the sight of Allah are the ones who have the most what? Taqwa. Right? Where's the Dalil on that? Does everybody have this? So we know our purpose in life is to worship Allah. Shaitan is a jinn. And the best of us on the side of Allah. We're going to say right here, color don't matter. Color don't matter. Doesn't matter if you're white, black, brown, tall, short. Don't matter if you're light skinned, dark skinned. Don't get caught up in that. Don't get caught up in the Willie Lynch plantation psychosis. Oh, look at him. He's dark. Oh, look at him. He's light. Oh, he look at his hair. Oh, he got nappy hair. These are all of the things that they taught us to help up to hate ourselves. We were taught to hate ourselves. But the loss of law gives us honor and power or is a or rank based on your deen, not based on what you look like. So Allah says in chapter 49, verse 13, huh? the best, most taqwa, the most taqwa, the best in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. Right? And we're going to explain this word taqwa, inshallah. The best of you in the sight of Allah, those who have the, the Android X95000, the space modulator, you guys can look up these ayats, right, and verify that, I'm, that I'm, what I'm saying is the truth, because I don't have a Quran up here. 49, 13, the best of you, Allah said, I created different tribes and different nations so that you may get to know one another, ta'arafu. But the best of you in the sight of Allah, those who have the most aprama or the most karima, the most honorable in the sight of Allah, are those who have the most taqwa. Okay? So I'm going to explain this word taqwa. Everybody got this? Right? The word taqwa, taqwa, means to shield, protect, safeguard, have fear, etc. So 49.13, the best of you in the sight of Allah are the ones who have taqwa. T-A- Q-W-A, taqwa. Those who shield themselves, those who protect themselves, those who safeguard themselves, 
those who have fear of Allah. Taqwa means who are the most that guard themselves against Allah's wrath. Who are those that guard themselves against Allah's wrath and his anger? And the way that you gain Allah's anger or his wrath is by disobedience to him. So those who have the most taqwa are the ones who guard themselves and those who are the most obedient. We guard ourselves and it's two main things that we guard ourselves from. Well actually there's four. First and foremost we guard ourselves against what? Allah's wrath. Right? We guard ourselves against Allah's wrath. How do we do this? By obedience abstaining abstaining from the haram was haram that which is forbidden right we shield ourselves from Allah's wrath by being obedient to him by abstaining from the haram or the forbidden. This is how we safeguard ourselves from Allah's wrath. This is how we have taqwa. Who are the ones that are the most obedient? Who are the ones that are most abstaining from the haram, the forbidden, the things that Allah tells us not to do? Also, we shield ourselves against shaitans tricks, plots, okay? We protect ourselves against shaitan's tricks and his plots. We protect ourselves from his whispers. The shaitan is the one who said that I will make them do what you told them not to do. When Shaitan got kicked out of paradise, when Adam and Eve got kicked out of paradise, right? When Shaitan became Shaitan because first he was a beautiful jinn. You hear the story that he was a beautiful angel, but he was a beautiful jinn. He was most obedient to Allah. But then when he became disobedient, and who knows what Shaitan did that made him disobedient? He was being bad by not listening to Allah, by doing what? What did he do? What was the first thing that he disobeyed Allah with? He didn't, he didn't bow down. He didn't bow down in, uh, um, he didn't bow down in front of man. He didn't bow down to Adam. He didn't bow down to Adam. You guys have this? Let me just erase this right here. When we have taqwa, we are safeguarding ourselves from Allah's wrath. Obedience abstaining from the haram, we are safeguarding ourselves from shaitan's tricks. He whispers to us. There's a plethora of hadith, there's a plethora of things in the Quran that Allah says shaitan will do this, shaitan will try to do this, shaitan will try to make you alter, shaitan will try to make you uh, exchange his creation or change his creation. The men try to be women, women try to be men. You know, uh, uh, fake implants or this, things of that matter. So shaitan, he will try to do this to you. Okay? Yes. The first thing that shaitan did in his disobedience was he didn't bow down to Adam. 